Friday the 13th is so famously unlucky that there's even a phobia dedicated to it. Today is the first time that Friday the 13th fall in October since 2017 and for that we are going into some of the terrifying stories that happened on this date. March the 13th on Friday, 2020 could be considered the first official day of the pandemic in the US. After a week of increasingly horrifying COVID-19 updates, President Trump declared a national emergency due to the pandemic. The murder of Tupac Shakur is one of the most famous unsolved cases in recent history. Some say he was taken out by his friend Suge Knight. Others are convinced it was Christopher Wallace, aka the Notorious B.I.G., while others still think the FBI conspired to kill Shakur in order to end the violent East Coast versus West Coast feud. The details we do know. Shakur was shot four times on September 7, 1996 in Las Vegas. He succumbed to his injuries six days later on Friday, September 13th. In a recent development on September 29, 2023, 60-year-old Dwayne Keith D. Davis found himself facing charges related to the murder of Tupac. However, Dwayne is not being accused of physically committing the fatal act in that fateful Las Vegas night. Instead, he stands accused of orchestrating the head-on Tupac, allegedly making the call that set the wheels in motion for the tragic event. As of now, the trial is still ongoing, with legal proceedings and investigations actively in progress to determine the extent of Dwayne's involvement and culpability in the murder of the iconic rapper Tupac. A British 13-year-old boy was struck by lightning on Friday the 13th at 13.13. While getting struck by lightning is definitely horrible, this incident actually ended up being a miracle. According to the Daily Mail, the unnamed teenager was struck by lightning while at an air show in England in 2010 and was treated only for burns on his shoulder. The hospital stated he was expected to make a full recovery. Kitty Genovese, a Queen's resident, was brutally attacked and murdered. The murder of Kitty Genovese took place on March 13, 1964. According to the New York Times, Genovese was assaulted and killed by Winston Mosley inside her apartment building. The crime is famous because, reportedly, 38 people heard the attack, and none of them called the police making the bystander effect a household term and also because it happened on Friday the 13th. It was later suggested that the reporting of the crime was inaccurate and greatly exaggerated, but no matter the specifics, an innocent woman died which is truly tragic. The Costa Concordia cruise ship ran aground off the coast of Italy. The Costa Concordia sank into the ocean on January 13, 2012. According to Vanity Fair, it became the largest passenger ship ever wrecked, with almost double the number of people on board than on the Titanic. 32 people died and the captain was convicted of manslaughter in 2015. A lot of people are afraid to fly when the date falls into Friday the 13th. That's because a flight through the Andes ended in disaster and death. Uruguayan Flight 571 was headed towards Chile when it crash-landed in the Andes on October 13, 1972. In the following days, the survivors were reduced to hiding in the fuselage of the plane and eating deceased passengers, according to People. The rescue efforts were called off only 10 days after the crash, so it was shocking when two men appeared 72 days later and alerted the authorities that there were 16 other survivors trapped in the mountains. On that same day, another flight crashed in Russia. At the time, the tragedy of Aeroflot 217 was the worst plane crash in Russian history. All 174 people on board the flight, including the 10 crew members, died when the plane crashed while trying to land due to bad weather. It's never been confirmed what the cause of the crash was some speculate it was a lightning strike. The plane ended up just three miles away from the runway. The Ku Klux Klan's first Grand Wizard was born. Nathan Bedford Forrest was born on July 13, 1821. Forrest first rose to fame as a Confederate general and was in charge of the infamous Fort Pillow Massacre, where he and his men allegedly killed over 200 unarmed Union soldiers that had surrendered, many of whom were black. Forrest is widely believed to have served as the KKK's first Grand Wizard, though he would later decree that the organization should be demolished, the Bola Cyclone at Bangladesh. The storm officially ended on November 13, 1970, but the effects are still being felt to this day. The Bola Cyclone is still the deadliest storm in the Bay of Bengal. The death toll is estimated to be from 150,000 to 550,000 according to NBC News. A specific district in Bangladesh lost over 45% of its population, Hurricane Science reports. In addition to being deadly and extremely costly, the cyclone is credited with jump-starting a civil war. At the time of the storm, the area was called East Pakistan. The Pakistani mismanagement of the relief efforts are considered to be a huge event in the fight for Bangladeshi independence. The inaugural American daredevil, Sam Patch, 
achieved fame in 1829 when he leaped into the Niagara Falls River from a harrowing two-thirds of the way up Niagara Falls. Later that same year, he made another audacious decision, opting to jump from the 99-foot, approximately 30 meters, high falls above the Genesee River. He had been striving to gather more funds for his daring feats, but the financial response fell short of his expectations. On Friday, November 6th, during his initial leap, he repeated his daring stunt, but not the same could be said for his luck. His daring venture ended in tragedy as he met an untimely demise. Remarkably, he decided to give it another try the following Friday the 13th, a date traditionally steeped in superstition. However, this time, fortune did not favor him, and he tragically fell to his death during the perilous leap. Sam Patch's audacious escapades left an indelible mark in the annals of daredevilry, forever etching his name in the history of high-risk feats. July 13, 1951, was an extremely inauspicious day for northeastern Kansas. The rains had been coming down hard and heavy since July 9th, bringing up to 16 inches, 40 centimeters, of precipitation to the Kansas, Neosho, Verdigris, and Mary Designs Rivers. On that Friday the 13th, records were broken. In Topeka, the Kansas River rose to 40.8 feet, 12.4 meters, which was 14.8 feet, 4.5 meters, above flood stage and 6 feet, 1.8 meters, higher than any flood ever measured to that date, according to the National Weather Service. Topeka was swamped, as was Lawrence, in the Manhattan, Kansas business district. The water stood at 8 feet, 2.4 meters deep. It was the single worst day of flood destruction in the Midwest to that date. According to the National Weather Service, 28 people died, and another 500,000 were displaced until the waters receded. The National Weather Service and the US Army Corps of Engineers estimate the damage amounted to $935 million at the time, which is equivalent to $6 billion in today's dollars. On Friday, June 13, 1952, the Cold War turned hot when the Soviet Union shot down a Swedish military transport plane. Eight people were on board the plane, which the Swedish government insisted was merely on a training flight. For its part, the Soviet Union declared it had no involvement in shooting down the lost EC-3. However, a life raft with shrapnel damage was found during the search for the wreckage, according to the Swedish Air Force Museum, and one of the rescue planes, a Catalina was shot down by Soviet fighters mere days after the DC-3 disappeared. Both Sweden's and the Soviet Union's stories eventually fell apart. Almost 40 years after the so-called Catalina affair, Swedish officials admitted that the plane was a spy plane. Likewise, in 1991, the Soviet Union admitted to shooting the plane down. In 2003, the wreckage of the lost plane was found on the floor of the Baltic Sea. Four crew members were identified, but the other four remained missing. The remains of the plane are on display at the Swedish Air Force Museum. The deadliest tropical cyclone in history struck on Friday, November 13, 1970, making landfall that Thursday night. The Bola cyclone killed at least 300,000 people, according to the University Corporation for Atmospheric Research. The storm was equivalent to a Category 3 hurricane, with sustained winds of 115 miles per hour. Even more devastating was the storm surge, funneled by the shallow geography of the Bay of Bengal. The ocean pushed onto land. According to a 1970 report from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the surge pushed water up to 16 feet, 5 meters high. With nowhere to evacuate, two people climbed trees to escape the rising waters. Many were swept away. The highest survival rate was that for adult males aged 15 to 49. Researchers reported in a 1972 article in the journal The Lancet which is consistent with the impression that those too weak to cling to trees, the old, young, sick, and malnourished, and females in general were selectively lost in the storm. On Friday the 13th in October 1972, the Uruguayan Old Christians Club rugby team boarded a turboprop plane to travel to a match in Chile. They never made it, because of a navigational error. The plane careened into an Andean mountain peak, crashing on a high-altitude snowfield. But the ordeal was only the beginning for 27 of the original 45 passengers who survived the crash and its immediate aftermath. Without cold weather gear or much food, they were forced to improvise water melting devices and eventually eat from the bodies of their lost companions an ordeal memorialized in the 1974 book and 1993 Mavia Liff. An avalanche killed eight more survivors at the end of October, and illness took the lives of others. Incredibly, rescue did not come until the end of December after two survivors launched a death-defying effort to hike out of the rugged terrain for help. The last of the 16 survivors were rescued on December 23, 1972, 
after 72 days in the frigid wilderness.